A quiet, moonless night. Shooting stars. The first glimpses of alien life. Curious bystanders approach the machine sitting in the street, unaware that they would be the first losses of a global war against an unexpected, brutal enemy. Humanity's first contact with extraterrestrial life left no survivors. In the wake of these horrific attacks, a task force is assembled. The world's finest soldiers, scientists, and engineers, with a master tactician at its helm. This organization will save the planet from alien invasion, or die trying. Good luck, Commander. Welcome to XCOM Enemy Within. Before we get into the game, we've got to talk about our starting options. I've chosen to play on normal difficulty. Nothing too extreme, but it's certainly not going to be a pushover. I'm turning on Iron Man mode, so you can be sure I'm not safe scumming for good luck. Everything you see happen is set in stone. I can't go back to change fate, I have to play the hand I'm dealt. Soldiers aren't perfect, nor are they predictable. Not created equally will randomize the starting stats of each soldier, and hidden potential makes their stat increases from promotion random too. Finally, aiming angles will make cover and unit placement incredibly important. Both my own soldiers and the enemies will get aim bonuses from flanking. While this can make killing aliens easier if I play carefully, if I'm caught off guard it could have deadly consequences. We're going to start in Africa to take advantage of the region's all-in bonus, which will make my monthly allowance from the council 30% larger. I will have a lot of things to spend on, so this boost will be instrumental in the early game setup phases. With everything locked and loaded, our first mission begins. Operation Lone Hero, our first team putting boots on the ground to meet the invading force. Rookies Christine, Amy, Lauren, and Karen are the first to make contact. As our soldiers take their positions in the square, the first hostiles wander into view. Sectoids. The most basic foot soldiers of the enemy army, these little guys specialize in giving temporary psychic boosts to their allies, increasing their health and crit chance. Luckily, if you kill the sectoid giving the boost, the one receiving it will die as well. I'll be taking advantage of this as much as possible in the battles to come. When the sectoids spot us, they scatter for cover. Christine takes aim and kills one immediately. Amy pushes forward, but her shots go wide. Lauren is the first to take advantage of the flanking bonus and kills her sectoid with a devastating critical hit. Karen fires enough bullets to shatter the stone of the fountain nearby, but takes out the third foe in the process. And then there was one. It charges forward recklessly and fires blindly. Karen hunkers down as burning plasma flies overhead. Lauren damages the creature as Karen approaches to deal the killing blow with her pistol. Nice. With the fourth sectoid dead, the park falls silent. The enemy is dead, and our soldiers are unscathed. Time for them to come home. Upon returning to base, I'm greeted by Bradford, Shen, and Valen, my supporting staff who will help research, plan, and equip my soldiers for battle. I start Valen on her team on researching xenobiology, ask Shen to clear out some space around the base for future construction, and requisition a med kit for use in battle. From this point on, I've customized all my starting soldiers to be friends of mine. I figure having a personal connection to them will make me less likely to get them killed with a stupid mistake. After some downtime at the base, I'm contacted by the Council with my very first mission, a VIP escort. Simply bring William Thorne to the extraction point and eliminate any ETs we see along the way. As a reward, we'll be given a high-level support soldier and help keep the peace in the area. Gearing up for this mission, Sabrina, our support class, Evelyn, our sniper, and Brody and Trent, recruits who have yet to earn a specialization. As Operation Sacred Crone begins, our troops find themselves in an alleyway with little cover. To stay safe and avoid being flanked as they advance, I order them to push through the building to their north instead. As Brody exits the other end of the building, he spots our first thin man. These are highly mobile units that can spit poison from afar, or leave clouds of it lingering upon death. These guys are no fun to deal with. 
The creature leaps to the rooftops as soon as it knows we're here. Evelyn tosses a grenade up to eliminate the thin man before he becomes a problem, and the squad starts advancing slowly, knowing there must be more opponents lying in wait further down the alleyway. The VIP stays in cover, but close enough to keep an eye on. As our soldiers advance, another thin man appears on the rooftop. While Evelyn's overwatch shots go wide, Brodies connect, killing the creature before it can act. Both soldiers turn their eyes to the sectoid in the doorway down the alleyway, and once again, Brody finishes the thing off with a well-placed crit. With Trent taking point on Overwatch, the VIP and the rest of the squad move closer to the extraction point. Another thin man appears on the roof, and gunshots echo down the alleyway as Evelyn and Trent both open fire. As the forces make the final push to the extraction point, Evelyn is shot by another sectoid running for cover in the distance. Command demands we eliminate any aliens left in the area before we can leave, so the gang advance down the street to finish it off, as well as one more they find in a nearby building. Upon returning to base, both Brody and Trent are promoted to heavy soldiers, swapping their assault rifles for light machine guns and each picking up a once-permission rocket launcher. Our new support unit is added to the roster, and I customize him as myself. After all, how can I ask my friends to give their lives if I won't fight myself? As for my perks, I pick a skill that allows me to move further on each of my turns, and the ability to use medkits three times per mission rather than just once. Our next mission, Operation Flying Vengeance, goes off without a hitch. Myself, Brody, Kat, and Michaela drop into the area, four sectoids dispatched in a matter of seconds after being found, not a single shot fired towards our own soldiers. As a reward, four more scientists join the team, speeding up future research drastically. Dr. Valen and her team finish their research on xenobiology, and she urges us to capture a sectoid. Alive. We begin construction on a containment facility and researching an arc thrower with which to stun a creature to bring it in intact. As this research begins, a UFO is spotted by our satellites. We send an interceptor to shoot it down. We have eyes on the bandit. <laughs> We send out the same squad from last mission to sweep out any survivors and salvage materials from the ship. The first pod of sectoids we see take cover behind some trees. As Mikhail pushes forward to take a shot, Kat obliterates their cover with a grenade. Our first foes are down before they even have a chance to fight back. The soldiers give each other overwatch cover as they advance towards the crashed alien ship and whatever is contained within, which we soon discover is an outsider. While these guys have no special abilities to speak of, they have good aim and they can deal high damage. Brody kills it immediately. Michaela pushes forward to smoke out any hiding enemies, and a pair of sectoids scatter for cover. One forms a psychic connection with the other to give it a boost, and that one shreds more than half of her health away in a single attack. I advance and attack the sectoid giving the boost, taking them both out with one shot and bringing the mission to a close. We come home with no casualties, but a soldier whose wounds leave her out of commission for the next week. My soldier receives a promotion, and I choose a perk that allows me to stop bleeding out soldiers and bring them back into the fight with one third of their health using a med kit, rather than before where I could simply stabilize them to prevent death. A few more days pass, Shen finishes constructing the alien containment facility, and Volan finishes her research on the arc thrower. We purchase one for use, we ask Volan to do some alien autopsies while she waits for a live specimen, and we set out on our next mission, hoping to bring one back for her. I swap Evelyn and Michaela back into the squad since they've taken their time to heal from their injuries, and I hand Michaela the arc thrower to use when the opportunity presents itself. As we push into the next area, I kill a pair of sectoids by taking advantage of another psychic link. We spot another pair, take cover before they open fire on us, and Evelyn takes them both out with another well-placed sniper shot. As we go around the back of the building, we enter a firefight with another group of sectoids. Michaela moves out of sight, hoping to take advantage of their distracted state to flank them and shock one with an arc thrower so we can take it back alive. While Brody, Evelyn, and I take out the other two, Michaela knocks out the third and we take it home, our mission complete. With a live alien to interrogate, promotions earned, research and construction to be done, our adventure here is only just beginning. This is where we're stopping for now, but the war is far from over. I hope you've enjoyed watching so far. If you did, let me know in the comments. I can tell I'm going to have a lot of fun crafting this little archive of my experience, and I hope you'll tag along. You'll want to be here when things inevitably go sideways. 
As always, thanks for watching. Bye.